Hi everybody, welcome to lesson 1.5 and 1.6 with order of operations. So we're going to revisit adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing rational numbers, but we're going to see multiple operations in the same expression. So we're going to have to use the order of operations. Before we start, I want to do a little warm up to refresh your memory on what you did last year. So on the left side of this in your notes, you should see a blank piece of paper, or if you can't find that, just do this on a blank piece of paper, but there should be a, a blank page to the left of this in your notes. So last year you saw an expression that looked like this and like this, and you had to tell the difference between the two. You had to be able to evaluate them, even though they looked a little bit different. So. Here, this, is, this expression is saying the opposite of 6 squared, and here, with parentheses around it, it's saying take the negative 6, the entire thing, and square it. So two very different things giving you two very different answers. Thing about the exponent is it only applies to whatever it's touching. So in this case, the exponent is touching the 6. That means it only applies to the 6. So I'm really only taking 6 to the second power which gives you 36, and then this exponent would just be brought down. Because when you read this, it's saying the opposite of 6 squared. So I just drive that exponent straight down. Now over here, very different. Remember, the exponent applies to whatever it's touching. And in this case, it's touching the parentheses. So it's going to apply to everything in the parentheses. It literally means take the negative 6 and multiply it by itself. Negative 6 times negative 6, which gives you a positive 36. So two very different things, and it's important to understand the difference between the two. Um, here we get a negative answer, here we get a positive answer. Okay, now with that being said, we're just going to practice real quick on this warm-up, evaluating an expression where we're given a negative number and plugging it in. So here it says x is equal to negative 4. So wherever I see x, I want to plug in a negative 4. Well, this can get tricky because some students may just put a negative 4 like this, while some students will put parentheses around it like this, and it's going to give you two very different answers, just like we talked about up here. So I want you to remember that any time that you are substituting or plugging in a number, especially if it's negative, you're going to put parentheses wherever you're plugging the number in. So right here, this is saying x squared. We're going to put parentheses around the x, and then we're going to take this number and plug it in. Always parentheses, okay? So that's going to mean that we're taking the negative 4, squaring it, and minusing 5. So in this case, we're going to get 16 minus 5, because remember, this means negative 4 times negative 4. The second power is... Um, referring to everything inside the parentheses because it's touching the parentheses. So then this is going to give us the answer of 11. So on this one, we're, we're told that x is negative 3. Now do you see how here this is multiplication? But beca because I'm going to be replacing the x with a negative number, I want parentheses around the x, always. So I'm going to write two parentheses around the x, negative 3, replacing it with the negative 3, and then cubed. Now I do order of operations. So of course, exponent first, right here. Negative three times negative three times negative three. I always tell the kids, when in doubt, write it out. I mean, literally write that out. Negative three times negative three times negative three. These two make a positive nine. Then you multiply it by negative three, you get negative 27. Then you can multiply that two by two. So of course the signs disagree. And then we're really just taking 27 and we are doubling it, giving us 54. So negative 54. Okay, so now on this last one. Here we have 5x squared y. And I see that I've got some positive and some negative numbers. Again, just put parentheses everywhere where you are substituting. So I would write 5x squared times y. And then I'm going to plug in the x and the y. x is negative 2, y is 3. And then I use order of operations. So exponent here, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and then I can multiply by the 5 and by the 3. 20 times 3 is 60. 
So just a little recap on that these two are very different, so we want to be careful when we are substituting into an expression, especially with negative numbers, always use the parentheses. Okay, so let's give this lesson a try then. So now this is actually in your notes. Here's example number one. We're given an expression and we're told that these are the values for x and y. So we're going to substitute in. Notice that now we're going to start to see negative numbers where we hadn't before in the beginning of this chapter. So I see x here, just give it a parenthesis. y, give it a parenthesis. Okay? So I'm going to be plugging in and replacing. This is saying x to the third power. It means take all of x and raise it to the third power. So the whole x. That's why I'm take, putting the parentheses around it. I want all of the x. Okay, and then the y is 5. So now, order of operations, I would do exponent first. Remember, when in doubt, write it out. It's always a good practice to write this out and not try and do it in your head. So negative 1 half cubed, negative 1 half times negative 1 half times negative 1 half. You could always put parentheses around those two if that makes more sense to you. So here, if I multiply these two, I get a positive 1 fourth. And then if I multiply this by negative 1 half, I then would end up with negative 1 eighth. Plus 5. Okay, a little complicated. If you can do this on the number line in your head, go ahead. Otherwise, you'd want to find common denominators, and then you could end up with uh, an improper fraction. So I could go 5 over 1 times by 8 to make them both 8s, negative 1 eighth plus, this is going to be 40 eighths, then negative 1, add 40, will give you 39 eighths. And it's perfectly fine to leave your answer improper as long as it's simplified and it is. So that's number 1. Here's 2. Here we have absolute value, and remember that means a, a distance from 0 on the number line. And then we're multiplying by the by the square root of c. So this is what we're plugging in. So over here, I might use black for this. Looks like I've got uh, division, a over b, taking this divided by this. But I don't like writing it on top of each other, so I'm going to write it like this. Absolute value of a divided by b, especially when I'm doing fractions. I know I'm going to have to do keep, switch, flip, so it's better if they're written horizontally. And then I want to multiply that by the square root of c, which is 16 49ths. Looks complicated, but honestly, it really isn't. You can think of the square root as grouping symbols as well. So it looks like, and, and also, you can think of the absolute value as grouping symbols. So parentheses, brackets, absolute value, radical sign, they're really all grouping symbols. So we could... Um, do this first, and inside there, I would have to keep the first fraction the same, switch this to multiply, and then flip. Oh, I just wrote the, right, the same thing. Ah, don't forget to flip. There we go. And remember, that's absolute value. So here I can simplify, divide by 2, divide by 2, and if I multiply straight across, I get negative 3 over 10. So this is negative 3 over 10. I'm just going to write this over here. Negative 3 over 10. However, it's an absolute value bar. So what it's asking is what's the distance negative 3 tenths is from 0 on the number line. And distance is always positive. So it would be positive 3 tenths. This will be positive 3 tenths. Now we're asked to multiply it by the square root of 16 49ths. Remember, if this wants the square root of the entire fraction, I can take the square root of the numerator and the denominator separately. If I do that, the numerator will be 4 and the denominator will be 7. So this will be 4 7 Now I have my last step. Simplify before you multiply. These two are divisible by 2. And if I multiply straight across, end up with 6 35ths. So not too complicated, just lots of steps going on inside of there. On this next one, we're going to see a fraction. So we got a numerator to simplify and a denominator. It's only an n that we're plugging. We're plugging in a positive 4. So everywhere you see n, let's, let's write a, a positive 4. So parentheses here, square root of 4. 
Here I've got two parentheses four. All right, doesn't look too complicated. Let's go ahead and simplify the numerator. Here I would, uh, I could think order of operations, right? And this would kind of be like grouping symbols. I can simplify that. Square root of four is two. Plus, if I multiply here, it gets 16. So really this is gonna give me an 18. And then down here, exponent first, 16 times two, I get 32. Now, notice that 18 and 32 are both divisible by two, right? Um, so I could divide by two, top and bottom. I get nine over 16. And then that would be my final answer. Always simplifying your final answer. We always leave our answers in simplest form. And four, we have another absolute value. There it is, check it out. In this case, we are gonna replace S with negative four and T with eight. So I'm gonna rewrite the numerator. So it looks like we got parentheses around here and then squared. So three times S, three times S is negative four. And then down here, the absolute value of S minus T. There we go. So we will be simplifying the numerator and putting it here, denominator and putting it here. Let's go with the numerator first. So inside parentheses, the signs disagree. I have negative 12, and then I would square it. Now this, the two is stuck to the parentheses, so it's applying to everything in the parentheses. So this is negative 12 times negative 12, which would be positive 144. Then down here, I've got the absolute value of temperatures negative four and it drops eight, it'd be negative 12. But absolute value is asking, what is the distance of this number from zero on the number line? How far away is it from zero? And that would be 12 units away. So this would really be a positive 12. Now look what we have, 144 divided by 12 is 12. Ah, not bad, I like that one. Here's five. Here we've got some multiplication, an exponent. We've got an absolute value again, but a negative number we're plugging in. So be careful there. I know I'm plugging in ne a negative number. I'm gonna to wanna to use parentheses. So I've got two multiplied by C, which is negative four. D is two. Now C times D, it's already in parentheses. So C times D minus the absolute value of C. Ooh, tricky, tricky, right? We really are gonna have to use our order of operations on this. Parentheses first. Negative eight. You could leave it in parentheses if you want to. That's just gonna separate the negative sign from anything else. So I did that first. Um, these are also grouping symbols. So I'm gonna do that as well. The absolute value of negative four is asking how far away from zero is it on the number line, and that would be four. So this right here is gonna to change to a positive four. I'm gonna bring down the subtract. Copying everything else down. Now I'm ready for the next step, which after parentheses and grouping symbols comes exponent. So exponent next, that's gonna be right here. Two to the second power is four. Okay, so now I see that I have a lot of multiply going on here and divide, and I have to do them from left to right. So I could do all of this multiplication right here. Two times negative four times positive four. Well, I know that um, four times four here is 16. This would be negative 16. If I double that, I get negative 32. Divided by negative eight minus four. So now my next step would be division. Negative two divided by a negative eight, the signs agree, so positive four. So I'd end up with positive four, and the last step here is minus four, and I know four minus four is equal to zero. So that's how I do this one. Lots of operations, really important to use that order. It's also a good review for absolute value. And six, plugging in negative two and negative four. Two negative numbers we're plugging in, be sure you have the parentheses. I'm going to rewrite the numerator. 
we have 3, b is negative 2 in parentheses. Again, this is saying take b and square the entire b, so we want the entire b in parentheses. Plus 5 times c, which is negative 4, all over b to the 4th. Okay. All kinds of stuff going on. All right, I'm just going to leave a space here for my, my, my fraction. Um, I'm going to do the bottom one first here, negative 2 to the 4th. Maybe you can do that in your head. You know, multiply negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. If you can't, I would suggest writing it out. I always say when in doubt, write it out. And I see I get 16, positive 16. Then on the top, I have to use order of operations. Exponent first, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Okay, so here I have multiply 12, plus here I have multiply negative 20. And if I have 12 plus negative 20 or 12 minus 20, that would be negative 8. So that goes on the top. Negative 8 16 simplifies to negative 1 half. Always want our answers in simplest form. That's everything, you guys. That was just a review of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing rational numbers with order of operations. So we saw multiple operations. We needed to use that order. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.